spoke to me years ago and said I was to steward the mysteries of the kingdom. And that's what I've tried to do over the years. And I, I really want to focus on mysteries uh, for the next few meetings, that it's important for us to understand how the mysteries work. You know, in religion, uh, people are encouraged and sustained uh, by the many religious activities that they're involved in. It's not by the results that they're getting, uh, but in the kingdom, uh, the kingdom produces results. And so we need to, we need to recognize that God wants us to change situations, to bring his kingdom uh, into uh, reality and not that it's just uh, some uh, principle a, a, in the uh, uh, in the faraway distance, but the kingdom uh, can be brought into our situations. And when you bring the kingdom into a situation, things change. Uh, and that's that's important for us to recognize that we need uh, to to change, and we need to. The change starts with us and then it uh, changes in things around us. And so they're basically, uh, it's about the revelation of the mysteries of the kingdom. So you have to understand the mysteries of the kingdom. But when you discover mysteries, then you can begin to re uh, bring what you've been, what's been revealed to you in the mysteries, you can bring it into practice uh, on the earth, in your life and in situations. And there are basically uh, three premises that I want to talk about just briefly uh, that underlie this uh, series. And the first one is that in its most simplest form, we can think of the kingdom as being the authority and power of, the, of God uh, that can rule over what he has created. So it's his power, his authority, ruling over what he has created. That's, mm. that's premise number one. And I want you to know that uh, the Bible talks about there's a kingdom. It's a divine kingdom, and it's going to rule over other kingdoms. It's mm. not like there's a competition between kingdoms. There is uh, one kingdom that's going to rule over all. Daniel saw it, and uh, he had a vision, and he saw a lot of different uh, kingdoms. Uh, the Babylonians, the um, Persians, the Greeks, the Romans. But there's going to be one that rules over it, and it's the divine uh, kingdom. And so I want you to read that, and then we'll go to Revelation. Because again, God's kingdom is going to rule over all. In Daniel 2, 44, And in the days of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which will never be destroyed. Hallelujah. And that kingdom will not be left for another people. It will crush and put an end to all these kingdoms, but it will itself endure forever. Hallelujah. 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 It's and then forever. Forever. Okay. Revelations eleven fifteen. The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. Praise the name of Jesus. So I want you to see that you're in a kingdom. It's not like other kingdoms. It's going to supersede all other kingdoms. And so the first premise is that the kingdom is the power and authority of God to rule over what he has created. Premise number two uh, is that there has to be a change first in us, and then we can change things around us. So in the kingdom, the work goes on within us first, and then we're able to change uh, things around us. Now, we, we see this uh, with when the nation, the children of Israel came out, uh, were delivered out of Egypt. There was a great exodus, but they didn't change. God didn't change them. And so they wanted to go back uh, to where they had been. They, wanted, they couldn't go into mm -hmm. the promised land. Uh, so there has to be that internal change. We see it from John 3, verses 3 and 5, that we have to be born again in order to even see the kingdom. And then we're born of the water and born of the spirit. So these are internal changes. That happens first 
before we can enter the kingdom and bring the kingdom <clears throat> to bear on situations. And now premise three then is when we bring the kingdom rule into a situation, things will change. Hallelujah. Oh, that's really important. So that's Amen. where we really want to go. We get to, we want to make changes. And it's by the Holy Spirit revealing the mysteries of God to us, the mysteries of the kingdom, mm -hmm. then putting those mysteries into operation, bringing the kingdom to bear on a situation will change the situation. Jerry, do we have a verse? Yes, here? Matthew 12, verses 22 and verse 28. <clears throat> Then a demon possessed a man who was blind and unable to speak was brought to Jesus. And he healed him so that the man who was unable to speak was able to talk and could see. And then in verse 28, Jesus says, But if I cast out the demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you okay hallelujah so what he's saying what i've done i have done it by bringing the kingdom to bear on situations hallelujah. he healed the blind he healed the deaf he healed the crippled he healed he raised the dead and how did he do it by bringing the kingdom to bear on the situation oh that's good and, and we've got good. to have that revelation of mm, the mysteries mm, mm. see that the kingdom is filled with mysteries and we have to understand those mysteries and those have to be revealed to us uh, by the spirit. Jesus said flesh and blood is not revealed this to you, Peter. So the revelation oh, comes hallelujah. by the Holy Spirit. And when we have a revelation of the mystery of the kingdom of God, then we can put it into practice and it will change situations. Amen, and amen. if you don't remember anything else, <clears throat> remember this one point. And this is really the third point I was making. And that is you can change situations by bringing the kingdom to bear on it. That's what Jesus mm, did. Hallelujah. He encountered a man who was demon possessed, who was blind and could not speak. And Jesus brought the kingdom to bear on that situation by the Holy Spirit casting out that demon. And then the man could see and he could speak. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Now the kingdom, I want you to realize that the kingdom, there's no limit on the kingdom. The kingdom is expanding. It's increasing. Mm -hmm. And so don't think, well, I have read a book about the mysteries of God, so I know everything. Or mm -hmm. I have been taught the mysteries of God. See, things are changing. The, the kingdom is expanding at a faster rate than you can imagine. Oh, yeah. And this is by the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. We have to be flowing with the Spirit of God. Let the Holy Spirit reveal the mysteries to you. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to look at back in Isaiah. Mm -hmm. Isaiah uh, chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. For a child will be born unto you, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest upon his shoulders. There will be no end to the increase of his government or of peace on the throne of David and over his kingdom. Okay, so the kingdom is ever, is ever increasing, so it's not static. And, and don't think, well, I have found all the mysteries. No, the mysteries are going on and on, and we need to find the mysteries that reveal to your life and to my life. Those are the ones that we're interested in. Let the Holy Spirit show us what is important. Now, there are many wonder uh, miracle workers in the world. And the miracle workers are not to uh, solve all of the problems, not to solve your problems. And, and, and you may have, you may know uh, miracle workers. And the Lord said that Sherry and I are miracle workers, but the, we're not here to solve all your problems. What we're here is to model what a person filled with the Holy Spirit, a fragile vessel can do mm -hmm. when the Holy Spirit is allowed to move through that person. And, and so we do pray for people and they are healed. And, and we pray for different things and th different things happen. Uh, miracles happen and 
so we acknowledge that miracles happen in this day and this hour, and, and we want to show that to you. But that does not uh, enable us to solve all of your problems. But what we're talking about today and in in beginning in this series, this is how you get your problem solved. It's by bringing the kingdom, bringing the kingdom to bear on your situation. Oh, hallelujah. So let's go over it again. The mm -hmm. kingdom see is the rule and power of God over his creation and, and everything he's created. He can change. He can rule over with his power and authority that is in the kingdom. And, but with our lives, we, this is point number two. We have to change on the inside before we're going to see changes on the outside. Amen. And, Amen. and a lot of people don't like to do that. They don't want to change. They don't want to seek anything or search anything. They just want it all done for them. They just want God to come down yeah. and fix their situation. And that's not what it's about. And people have asked us to come and fix their situation. It's not going to happen. You've got to make some changes. You've got to, you start moving towards God and he will run towards you. Hallelujah. You the Hallelujah. First steps and you've got to be moving toward him and he will refine your pathway. Uh, but if you're just sitting, mm -hmm. uh, then he, there's nothing that he can do to get you moving in the right direction. You've got to make the first step and, and then he's going to help you. He's going to refine you know, the way you go, take you in the direction you need to go. He's going to show you things and he's going to put you in charge of your world and, and he gives you power and authority to do it. And so we're just vessels. We're just, we're just a mm -hmm. fragile vessels, mm -hmm. but God uses those people who are sold out to him Amen. to bring forth his kingdom. Hallelujah. And how is his kingdom going to increase? It's because people are that believe in the Lord are going to be open vessels to him so that his uh, spirit can flow through them and, and his uh, uh, the miracles will happen and signs and wonders will happen because as everybody is doing what they're supposed to be doing, uh, then the kingdom is going to be increasing. Or if a lot of the people are increasing, doing what they're supposed mm -hmm. to be doing, that you're going to be seeing the kingdom increase. There is no end to God's kingdom. That's pretty exciting. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus taught about mysteries. He said they're mysteries. Uh, I believe there's 72 times he talks about parables of the kingdom. Uh, things that we just, uh, we don't know naturally. Natural people cannot know those things. It's by the Spirit of God we know those things. And, and Jesus said here in uh, Matthew 13, verses 44 through 46, he said the kingdom is like hidden treasure. A person finds it and they sell everything to get it. And he says it's a, it's like a pearl of great price. Mm -hmm. And you go and you do whatever is necessary to get the kingdom. So I'm going to ask Sherry to read these three verses. Matthew 13, 44. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in the field, which a man found and hid again. And from joy over it, he goes and sells everything that he has and buys that field. And then if we go on in Matthew 13. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking fine pearls. And upon finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold everything that he had and bought it. And let's move on to Matthew 13, 11. And Jesus answered, to you it has been granted to know, hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. We can hallelujah. know the kingdom. Now, know everybody, the everybody. mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them... It has not, but to them, it has not been granted. Okay. So some people can know it, but everybody's not going to be able to know it. You have to be born of the spirit. You have to be filled with a, a born of the water and born of the spirit. And you have to be seeking and searching after it. You know, Paul wrote a lot of times and mentioned the, the mysteries of God a lot of times. First of all, he says it's God's will for us to know. Uh, the mysteries. I'm Hallelujah. glad to know that. Read this verse here. Colossians 1 27. To whom God willed to make known what the wealth of the glory of this mystery 
among the Gentiles, the mystery that is Christ in you, the hope of glory. See, it's God's will for you to know the mystery. And in this case, he's talking about the mystery of Christ in you, the hope of glory. And you can be taught about the mysteries. The, the next verse here. Ephesians 3, 4. By referring to this, when you read, you can understand my insight into the mystery of Christ. So we can teach others about mm, the mystery hallelujah. of Christ. And uh, we can pray and the mysteries mm -hmm. will be opened up. Read this verse. Colossians 4, 3. Praying at the same time for us as well, that God will open up to us a door. You hear that, Sister Becky? For the word, so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ, for which I have also been imprisoned. Oh, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. There are mm -hmm. doors to be opened. And when we go open those doors through our prayers, hallelujah. so that the mysteries can be revealed. And here's another verse that Paul wrote about the mysteries. And and that is, it's important for us to, to know these because we will be established when we know the mysteries of the kingdom. Mm, hallelujah, hallelujah. This is in Romans 16, verse 25. Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery which has been kept secret for long ages past. Okay, so you might think, well, I'm just tossed to and fro. Well, ha have you sought for the mysteries of the kingdom? Have you have you really looked into those things? Because it, Paul just wrote, it establishes us. When we begin to find out the mysteries of the kingdom, we begin to understand the working and operation of the kingdom, we get established in the present day truth and what God wants us to do you know th this message is really highlighted in that I we're looking at today is really highlighted in uh, matthew 6 and i just want to tell uh, briefly what uh, matthew 6 of course it's one that we're all familiar with and it starts out by jesus saying uh, this is the way you pray and and it's to pray uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, to the father and what he's really doing and of course, we all know this, this passage, but what he's doing, he's inviting us into that same relationship that he has with the Father. He's inviting us into that relationship. Mm -hmm. So these are not just pretty words, sweet words to think about. You have to think about what is, what is Jesus really doing? He's saying, uh, come into this kind of a relationship with the Father, the same kind of relationship that I have. Mm -hmm. and then it says, uh, hallowed be your name. Well, that word name there, it, it also can be translated as light and sound. And, and so what he's saying is you put your life. And I, th I want to think first about a candle. If you light a candle way out in the, uh, in the wilderness somewhere, it's not going to shine very brightly. But if you light a candle in your uh, room, uh, a dark room, then all of a sudden the whole room just becomes full of light. A light. Well, and that's where your life is. If everything in your life centers around God, right in the middle, there's mm -hmm. God. All of your activities, all, are, and that's the light of God, and it's in there. Then it begins. That light begins to magnify, and and every part of your life. That's what that verse. Uh, uh, first verse is uh, nine when he tells us how to pray. Uh, have that kind of a relationship with the Father. The same kind of mm -hmm. relationship that, that Jesus had with the Father. So that in the center of, of our life, every activity in our life, everything that concerns us is that light. And that begins to magnify and, and uh, expand penetrate. and open up and penetrate every part of our life. When we have that kind of relationship and then we can bring his kingdom reign into our life and into our situation. Now, if our life is scattered and we have all these things going on and they're not centered on God, they don't turn on God, they don't revolve on God, uh, then that light's not really able to penetrate all mm -hmm. of those different areas. And that's not it. Then we're not able to bring his reign, his kingdom reign into our lives. Mm -hmm. And that's, so that's what Jesus is saying in Matthew 6. 
and, and we go a little bit further in it, and they said, then he's going to be your provider. So when you put mm -hmm. him at Hallelujah. the center of everything, he is your provider. Mm -hmm. and he's providing for every aspect of your life, your physical life, your uh, emotional life, your spiritual life, everything. And he's got provision for all of those areas. And, and then Jesus talks in, in verse 20 of uh, still in Matthew 6, and, it, and he talks about a storehouse, put up a storehouse in heaven. Uh, where thieves can't break in, yeah, you don't have yeah. rust, you don't have things stolen from. So, so what kind of a storehouse, what kind of treasure can you put uh, in heaven? And that's the revelation, that's eternal things. And when you receive revelation of God's kingdom, then that becomes uh, a part of your treasure and it's a part of your storehouse in heaven. And then you can begin to draw on those things. You can draw mm -hmm. on your eternal things. See, some people mm -hmm. are so concerned about temporal things and they they contact us and want prayer for this and they want prayer for that, but they never think about eternal things. They never think about seeking the kingdom first and putting emphasis on eternal things. It's about the problems that they're encountering. Now, mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. like problems myself and, and we pray for a lot of people yeah. and we pray for a lot of problems that they have. But, but I want you to know that the way the kingdom operates, it operates with you first and changing things on the inside of you because the kingdom is in you, but it, and it starts there and it goes out and it affects the things around you. And so we build a storehouse in the heavens when we're seeking the kingdom and asking, the mysteries for, of the kingdom. Uh, asking, the, asking for the mysteries of the kingdom. And then we'll get down to verse 33 and, and, he, and he talks about seek first the kingdom of God, but, but literally that says above all else, oh, seek the kingdom hallelujah. and continually be seeking the kingdom. Amen. And so that's what that whole passage is from from verse 9 to verse 33, it's all about the kingdom, bringing the kingdom to bear on your situation. And remember that third uh, premise that I had is if you can find those mysteries in, by the Holy Spirit and begin to operate in the kingdom, you can uh, bring forth the kingdom to bear on any situation and solve any problem in your life or in the life of the people around you by bringing the kingdom to bear on it. That's Hallelujah. exactly Hallelujah. what Jesus said he did when he uh, cast out that demon by the Holy Spirit and caused that man who had been blind and deaf that he could now see, and now not deaf, but he could not speak, but now he could speak see and speak. He said, I brought the kingdom uh, to bear on that situation. And you can bring the kingdom to bear on any situation in your life, but you've got to seek for that. Uh, mm -hmm. There's so many mm -hmm. people that, that do religious activities. And that's why I started this discussion mm -hmm. that they're so concerned with religious activities. And that's what they're caught up with. And, and they're not getting results in their lives. Their children are not uh, serving the Lord, they're going out and doing other things, and and their spouse and their relation or relationship with their spouse uh, is shaky, and all of these things are going on because they're not seeking the kingdom first. Because when you're seeking the kingdom first and bringing it to bear on your situation, you can change. You can change situations. Amen. Amen. Now I want you to know that the kingdom. See these mysteries of the kingdom are revealed to the mature sons of God. Mm, now, mm, mm. in the Bible, in the Greek, uh, there are different words used for sons yes. and, and for children. And, and we see in uh, Matthew 18, 3, he's talking about little children. The kingdom, the little children can receive the kingdom, and we have to be like little children in order to receive the, ching, uh, the kingdom. But this Greek word is... Uh, Pation, Pation, it's just a little child. It's a little child. Mm -hmm. uh, but then uh, we get to Revelation, and I mean to Romans, mm -hmm. uh, Romans 8, 17, and it talks in that about another uh, child, another son. So, you know, a, a person, it can be a son when they're first born, 
and and then they're a son when they're a toddler and then and then their son uh when they are let's say early teen years they're still a son and so at, uh, romans uh 8 uh, 17 talks about these toddler not toddlers but like early teenagers and then and the greek word mm -hmm. there is technon technon and, and uh they're not yet mature they're not yet mm -hmm. mature but they can be heirs, heirs. of all things Hallelujah. read at read romans 8 17 please. and if children heirs also heirs of god and fellow heirs with jesus christ if indeed we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him okay but then there's another level and uh, the way this uh next you reach this next level uh and it's called a weos in the greek it's weos and uh when a let's say a young uh son uh, grows becomes mature then there's a day that the father presents him presents that son to the community and says uh, now I, 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 he's been involved with the business up until now but i'm turning things over to him Woo, I, hallelujah, I, I'm, hallelujah. Giving him, I'm giving him the authority and he can sign contracts in my name he can make decisions mm, in, in my name because now he mm, is fully mm, mature mm. to represent me hallelujah. and then, yeah. the son, then the father says this is my beloved son and Woo! whom i'm well pleased hallelujah and, and see if you look mm. at the life of jesus when he was 12 he knew that he had to be about the father's business, business. but there came a time when he was about 30 years of age uh, that he went out uh into the wilderness and he found uh, john the baptist mm -hmm. and and he knew that he needed to have john the baptist baptize him in water not because he had sins but because he was operating as a model for mm -hmm. you and me Hallelujah. so that we need to be uh baptized in water mm -hmm. just like jesus was baptized in model in water because he uh, is our model we look at what he did and, and he also not so that when when we are baptized into water our it's a bearing of our sins when we arise out of that then we're risen into the new life and we live the new life and when we're filled with the holy spirit then we can do what jesus did and that's what jesus uh did and so when jesus came up out of the water uh, after being baptized in the water by john the baptist uh, we heard a voice from heaven this is the father this is my beloved son in mm -hmm. whom i'm well pleased Amen. so now he's fully matured he's going to represent me whatever he does is going to be because he he knows my heart he hears my voice he, he does what i uh do he speaks what i say this is what the father is saying and, and so that's what jesus did and, and so he represented then uh, from that time on he represented that full mature son and that's why you and i can operate we're to operate as fully mature sons and that's who that to, that person is to whom god is going to reveal the, the mysteries. mysteries and so we see this in uh, romans 8 14. Uh, 8 14 and 8 19 so i want Sherry to read 14 first for as many as are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of God. Okay, but this word in the Greek is weos, and it means fully mature sons. So fully mature sons are led by the Spirit of God. Amen. Now, not only that, we go down to Romans 8, 19, and we'll see that somebody's waiting for us to come Hallelujah. forth as ma fully mature sons. Let's read this. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing 
of the sons of God. Okay. Every, and that's you and I. Everybody's waiting for that revelation and the maturing and the manifestation and the evidence of those mature sons. Uh, that's who we need to be. That's when you need to be operating in that way as Hallelujah. mature sons. And the father is saying to his mature son, these are my beloved sons. I give them full power and authority. Hallelujah. They represent me. They speak my words. They they do my deeds upon the face of the earth and they change situations. But the changes have occurred within them before they're able to stand up and proclaim changes to the things about them. Again. See, then Jesus, yeah. because he was a fully mature son and, and the father had acknowledged him, this is my beloved son, then he could stand up in the midst of a storm and speak to the storm Hallelujah. and have the storm stop to bring peace uh, to the situation and for the winds to stop blowing Amen. because he was a fully mature son doing what he saw the father do and speaking what he heard the father, father say. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for yeah, being here Hallelujah. today. Again, this is just an introduction. We haven't gotten into the mysteries of the prayers or, or the mysteries of uh, prophecy or mystery. There are lots of prophecies. I mean, lots of uh, different mysteries we're going to talk about. Today was an overall, just an introduction to the mysteries of the kingdom and why it is important for us to be able to, to use those mysteries, how we apply them, how we find out. We find out by the Holy Spirit. We have to continually be seeking for the kingdom. So thank you for being here, but be in tune Stay in tune for the mysteries to come. Hallelujah. Turning it over to Sherry. Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to open up the floor in just a moment. And I, I feel like there are some comments that you want to make uh, about this new series. You know, the knowing the mysteries of God, uh, like Brother Fred said, uh, and being able to bring those mysteries into our situations and other people's situations then that's when we see victory and that's when we see triumph uh over the over the the tactics of the enemy and that's what we want to see we want to know more about the mysteries of god we seek after them we search for them and that's what we encourage you to do as far as you know this introduction uh to this new series is that we are encouraging you uh, to to ask the lord show me your mysteries show me your mysteries about healing show me your mysteries about miracles show me your mysteries about uh encounters with you uh and 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 he will he will he will reveal those mysteries to you uh because you have uh, become one of his children and we believe that this leadership group are leaders that are mature. You are mature uh, sons of God, being led by the Spirit of God, and that's who he's going to reveal his mysteries to. What about the mysteries of, of, of financial abundance and, and, and blessings? Uh, he's going to reveal that to us. And so this is, this is something that not only can you receive for yourself, but also be able to give unto others. You know, and I spoke um, uh, this over the people uh, this morning, and that was that the Abraham blessing, the Abraham blessing, I speak over everyone in this, in this meeting tonight in the name of Jesus. And anyone who watches this, uh, later on, I speak over you the Abraham blessing. And what is that? It is God spoke to Abraham and said, Abraham, I'm going to bless you so that you can be a blessing. And, and that's what I speak over you. That you, that God is blessing you uh, in, in many different areas of your life that you might be able to turn and bless someone else and so i encourage you 
uh, to between now and April the 7th. Uh, that will be our next leadership meeting, April the 7th, and that you seek and search for the, and, and ask the Lord, show me the mysteries of your kingdom. And so I'm going to open up the floor and, and hear uh, uh, what you would like to say tonight. And again, thank you for, for being with us. Uh, healing is going on right now in your body. Those that came on this session tonight with any type of pain in their body. Uh, I noticed that we have Eddie back with us. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Anyone who has pain in their body right now, receive your healing in Jesus name. Receive that healing It's already in you. This is part of the mystery of healing. The healing is already in you. And so just let it manifest wherever it needs to manifest. If it needs to manifest in your back, praise the name of Jesus, receive it. If it needs to manifest in your feet, praise the name. Oh, hallelujah. Your joints, uh, your intestinal tract, uh, wherever it needs to manifest, uh, ask it to manifest in the name of Jesus.